and see the IMG 8881.CR2. Now, it's a CR2, which is Canon's RAW format. If you double click it, it'll open up in Photoshop, but it has to make a, a stop along the way. It's what's called a RAW file, so it opens up in ACR or Adobe Camera RAW. There's other RAW processing software out there, but this is the one we're gonna deal with. And the problem with this image is, it's backlit, so the sun is actually behind the model. Uh, so she's a little bit underexposed and the sky is a little bit overexposed. Now, one of the cool things about the raw format, we have this exposure slider over here. I grab that exposure slider and heft it around. You'll notice that we can make the image overall brighter and we can make the image overall darker. The problem is, if we make it dark enough that the sky looks okay, she ends up way too dark. If we make it bright enough that she looks okay, the sky ends up overexposed. I'm gonna show you a little trick where we can take advantage of the, the extra leeway of the raw format. The fact that when you shoot raw, you actually get more in the file than shows up in the image. So there's actually uh, you know some information beyond where the whites are right now. You can see where we're losing some details. I've got this red stuff around here showing me that there's overexposed areas around. It's off the end of the charts here. I can actually get that back, but if I try to do it all in this window, I may flatten out the contrast a lot. So let's actually make two versions of this image. We're gonna take this raw file, we're gonna process it twice. We're gonna make one exposure, one version of the image where she looks properly exposed. Then we're gonna make a second version where the background or the sky looks properly exposed. And we're gonna combine the best parts of each without a whole lot of masking involved. So call it the image, just double click, it'll come up in camera raw here. And let's make a bright version where she looks properly exposed. So I'm gonna take my exposure and I'm gonna pull it up to, I don't know, like plus one or so, so that she looks properly exposed. I'm gonna do plus one stop of exposure. And I'm gonna hit open image. So it processes it out and it brings it into camera raw. Then I'm gonna pop back to that raw file. So it'll open it up in Photoshop as a lighter version, then go back into the finder Double click the raw file again. It'll come up into camera raw. And this time, let's make an exposure where the background, the sky looks properly exposed. So I'm gonna pull this down to, I'm gonna do minus one again. So minus one stop of exposure for that background. So I did plus one for her, minus one for the background. Now, how do you think we could combine these images and get the proper exposure of her blended in with the proper exposure of the background. Let's try stacking them up. Let's take the, one of these images and we'll stack it onto the other. What might be a fast way of getting, let's say, let's take this darker version and put it on top of the lighter version. How do you think we could fairly quickly do that? If you've got both images open the way I have here, you can use the move tool and you can simply grab it and drag it over. Now, one of the things about Photoshop is with the, um, the application frame, you might be in a windowed mode like this, where you only see one at a time with some tabs at the top. A fast way of duplicating an image over, if you right click on the name of the layer and choose duplicate layer, this window pops up. And I'm gonna call this light. And look at this, destination. It says, well, where do you want this file to go? So right now I've got the IMG8881.CR2 version open. This is the light one, the first one that we processed out. I'm gonna send it over to the IMG8881-2. This is the second one that we processed out. It added a dash two because this one was already open and it couldn't give it the same name. So this is the darker version. I'm gonna select that and hit okay. And it looks like nothing happened, but if I go over to the dash two version, there's the light version stacked on top of the dark version. So give that a try. Get that lighter version stacked on top of the darker one. Now, we need to hide, in this case, we wanna hide this light background so that we see the dark background behind it. Now that, okay, don't do what I'm about to do. Take a look on the screen for a second. If I gave this a layer mask, and I took a paintbrush with some black paint, and I started painting. Remember, black hides on a layer mask. So if I started painting around here, look at, oh, there's that darker sky revealing. And if I turn off the background, you can see what's happening. I'm basically hiding the lighter version of her, wherever I paint black, she's hidden, and we're seeing the darker version down below. And if I paint with white, I can reveal. The problem is, look at this glow around the outside. That's kind of a dead giveaway that something has been done. What if we could make a layer mask that followed the contours of her 
perfectly. I mean, that would take a really long time, wouldn't it? If we zoomed in there, we'd have to paint all around the edges in between things. We'd have to go all around all the different hairs in here. That would take a long time. But if I could do that, what might that layer mask look like? Like right now, you can see I gave it a layer mask and it's filled with white, which means it's revealing. So we see her. Uh, not an outline, a silhouette. Yeah, so you know, if it was gonna be hiding the back, actually it'd be the opposite of a silhouette. On this one, we would want black around the outside, hiding the sky, and white in the middle. So we would want black out here, white in the middle. Where might we be able to find something that's fairly close to that? Look in the channels panel. You see where you got layers and channels? Click on the channels tab, and let's look at the individual color channels that make up this image. So there's the RGB, this is the composite, so this is the red, green, and blue all together creating the full color image. If I click on the letters R, G, and B, and then I click on the word red, there's the red channel. Now is that kind of silhouette-y a bit? Meh. We've got a really bright sky here, we got a, uh, she's a little bit light, isn't it? Let's look at the green channel. Oh, she got darker, didn't she? See, in the red channel, look at how there's a lot of red in the skin in there. So the red is fairly bright because there's a lot of red, but there's not so much green in the skin, is there? And in the green channel, she's a bit darker. And she probably has even less blue. So she gets fairly dark. And the sky being blue ends up fairly bright. Notice in the red channel, the sky is fairly dark. In the blue channel, the sky is fairly bright. And she's looking kind of silhouette-y. Now, if I take a look at the dark version of her and I go into the channels, See, I've just basically turned the eyeball on the light version off. That's looking even more silhouette-y. Interesting. Give it a try. Turn off the eyeball on the light version, pop into the channels there, and look at that blue channel. Look at how dark she is and how bright the background is. Now, is that a perfect silhouette? Not really. I mean, it's, it's close, but we see a lot of gray tones in here. We see some gray in the sky. We see some gray in the skin. We need to get rid of those gray tones. A layer mask needs to be either pure black or pure white to hide or reveal. What could we do to get rid of those gray tones? We could play around with the levels, couldn't we? But would we want to mess around with the levels of the blue channel? I mean, this is what makes up part of that color information, isn't it? Let's make an alpha channel. Do you guys know what an alpha channel is? Take a look on the screen for a second. Let me just go over what the idea of the alpha channel is again. Let's say, uh, I think I said I had a client and um, they wanted a, a cloud drawn on the image. So I took my last suit tool and I spent you know, hours making this amazing selection of a cloud. And uh, they want it to look like it's a little rain cloud. So I took my paintbrush and I put some cloud in there. If I deselect it and then save this up you know, and came back to it a few weeks later, could I get that selection back? I can't, can I? That selection will be gone unless I go under select, save selection, and I'll call it my awesome cloud. Then I can deselect, and if I look in my channels panel, there's an alpha channel that's storing that selection. So if they call back a week later and say, oh, we want this to be a storm cloud in there, I say, oh, no problem, let's go under select, load selection, and I'll load up that awesome cloud, and then I can paint some shadows in there, and there's my little rain cloud. So an alpha channel basically stores that selection information. And it works the other way as well. Let me just get rid of this cloud here. Um, if I go into my channels here and I click the new channel icon, it calls it alpha one for me. If I take a paintbrush and I do a little bit of modern art on it, do a little ding, 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 ding. it's a Picasso. Um, I don't see it when I'm in my regular RGB view, but if I go under select, load selection, and I tell it that I want to call up that alpha one, hit OK, I have a selection based on that alpha channel. So that's what an alpha channel is all about. OK, well, how's that going to help us? Well, remember that blue channel where she's fairly dark and the background is fairly light? Give this a try. Duplicate that channel. Just grab the icon for the blue channel and drag it down onto the new channel icon. Boink. That makes a copy of it. It's called blue copy. Very conveniently names it copy for you. And it's highlighted and it's visible. All right, so we have that blue copy there. We need to get rid of those gray tones. Let's play with its levels. Let's go under Image, Adjustments, Levels, or Command L is the keyboard shortcut for it. And on this image, you'll notice that it's got 
two little histograms in there. Notice how we have this little mountain range down below, and we have this little mountain range up above here. We've got one down in near the black point, and we have one up near the white point. Now, what parts of the image do you think this little mountain range down here towards the black point represents? What part of the image do you think that is? It's going to be the darkest parts, isn't it? So it's her, it's the dress, it's the little fence in behind. What part of the image do you think this mountain range here represents? The background, yeah, the sky basically, the really bright parts. Uh, and we have very good separation between the two. Now, give this a try. Grab the black point and the input levels there and start pulling it to the right. And look at what happens as this little mountain range here, all this tonality that represents her, the dress, the wall, as that tonality ends up to the left of the black point. As I start pulling this slider to the right, all that tonality starts to disappear. And if I grab the white point and start pulling this to the left, the tonality in the sky, all the grays that were in the sky starts to disappear. Now, here's an interesting question. I said we're pulling this in so we get a nice you know, black in the foreground, white in the background. We're getting this kind of silhouette sort of look. Would it be better, because like, look at this. We're still getting some stuff going on in here. I still see some gray tones. Should I pull this all the way up to here, maybe, so that those are gone? And if I pull this all the way down, well, we know that there won't be any detail in the highlights there. Would that be a good thing or a bad thing, do you think? I, I would argue it would be a bad thing. Take a look on the screen for a second. Take a look at the hair here. Do you notice the edge between the sky and the foreground, the foreground and the background? We've got these kind of gray pixels along here, this nice soft transition edge. Look at what happens if I pull this black point up too far. Does that look like a very convincing edge? Now that's going to be kind of rough, isn't it? Kind of a jagged sort of edge. You want to keep these points as far apart as you can while still getting a nice, you know, deep black in the foreground and rich white in the background there. And I'm not going to worry about these. These can be changed at any time. Once you've got a layer mask, you can paint black or white on it. You can fix it up as much as you want. So pull the black point in, pull the white point down until you get a nice white sky, nice black foreground. And I'm just going to hit OK to accept the horrible things we've done to this channel. And it's OK that we've done horrible things to it because it's not one of our color channels. We definitely wouldn't want to affect these guys. But this is just a duplicate, so we're fine there. All right. Let's use this mask. Uh, first off, let's go back to our RGB here. Just click on the letters R, G, and B. And let's pop back over to our Layers panel. And let's turn back on that light version. And let's load up that alpha channel as a selection. So there's my light version on top. There's my dark version down below. I'm going to go under Select, Load Selection. And it's going to ask which channel I want to load. And in this case, it's the blue copy, because it was the blue channel we made a copy of. And I'm going to hit OK. So I have a selection from that alpha channel. Uh, now, in this case, the selection represents the sky around her, which is slightly problematic, but not very. When we have an active selection and we create a layer mask, the layer mask is based on the selection. So the fact that I have the sky selected is slightly problematic. Uh, click the new layer mask icon, a little rectangle with the gray circle in the middle of it. We have an active selection. We give it a layer mask. And we have the overexposed sky mixed up with the underexposed version of her. Basically, we have a layer mask that is the exact opposite of what we wanted. Uh, remember I said we wanted a, a black sky around here to hide the overexposed version and a white version of her to reveal the lighter version. What's a fast way of fixing what we've got there? What if we could invert that layer mask? Command I. Command I. Give it a try. Hit a Command I. That layer mask inverts, black becomes white, white becomes black, and look at that. We have a properly exposed sky with a properly exposed version of her. And if you look at the layer mask, if you option click there, look at that, there it is. It follows those contours. Now, there are some problem areas. Like if you look at the dress here, if I turn this layer off and on, or if I disable it, look at what's happening to the flowers there. Do you see this kind of lack of contrast, because it's slightly hiding the lighter version, which means we're seeing a bit of that darker version behind. What do we do about that? What if we took a paintbrush, and we know that it's supposed to be white, and we just paint it over top of it? Now, it's easy to do when we're looking at the layer mask, but we don't have to be looking at the layer mask. If I look at the image itself, and I paint on the layer mask, notice these little four corner points show that I'm working on the layer mask, and I paint over it. 
There's before and there's after. So we can fix it while we're looking at the image itself. It just makes it a little bit easier to see those gray areas when we're looking at the layer mask. Now, do you think I should use a soft edge brush or a hard edged brush for this? I think for this, a hard edge might be a bit more appropriate. It doesn't make that much of a difference around here, whether it's hard or soft. But when I get it to something like this, say like on the little elbow here, see how there's a little bit of it that's gotten missed? With a soft edged brush, if I try to get close enough to the edge, uh-oh, see that little glowing bit around the outside there? That's not good. So I either have to go not quite far enough to get to the edge, or go over the edge, and a little bit of that mist will kind of haze over. In this case, I think a hard edge brush might be a little bit better. That lets me get right up to the edge without going over. So we can just clean up those little gray bits on the layer mask. And we could have done this while it was an alpha channel as well. Whether we do it now or when it's an alpha channel doesn't really matter. The end result is the same. Now guys, you may find some of the edges might be a little bit harsh. Like if you look around the bottom of the dress here, if we look at the layer mask, it did make a very contrasty edge. And you can see here with, you know, with the overlap of the lighter and the darker, there's a little bit of a kind of a roughness in there. Here's a little trick for softening out the edges of layer masks. There's a tool called the blur tool. Looks like a little teardrop there. And look at what it does. See how it kind of softens the edge? Sometimes layer masks can come out a little bit harsh. Watch what happens if I blur that layer mask. So if you find you got a bit of a hard edge in places, sometimes just a little bit of the blur tool can help soften out those harsh edges.